Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to uh, today to CEPR, to our policy forum on the future of globalization and U.S. influence in the changing world order. I'm looking around and I'm trying to figure out like a number of our registrants are students, but I know it's 9:30 on a Friday. Can you just, I'm just just for out of curiosity. Please raise your hand if you're a current Stanford student. It's, like, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. So we'll see that proportion grow during the day, especially when there's food and whatnot. But anyway, it's very, I would like to compare that proportion with the registration proportion. And there's a, there is a statistically significant difference there, I am pretty sure. Uh, in any case, uh, welcome everyone. I'm Mark Duggan, the Trioni Director of CEPR. And it's really a pleasure uh, to have you here with us today at the Stanford Institute for Economic Policy Research. At CEPR, we typically hold two policy forums each year that allow us to do a deep dive on an especially important area of economic policy. Our four most recent policy forums have focused on tax policy, social security reform, homelessness, and a compare and contrast of the economic models of California and Texas. Today, we are expanding our focus to an issue that is relevant far beyond the borders of the US, the future of globalization. Um, but what exactly is globalization? One way to look at it is to measure how technology and international trade have fostered greater integration, competition, and collaboration among different countries. By pretty much any measure, the trajectory of globalization has not been linear. Over the past 150 years, we have experienced progress, setbacks, and stagnation in global integration at various times. And the impact of globalization has varied massively around the world. It has brought clear benefits to many of us in the developed world through a wider range of products and services, increased competition to spur efficiency, and an exchange of ideas, skills, and human capital across borders. However, globalization also has clearly had drawbacks. Uh, its uneven distributional effects meant that it was very painful for those who lost their jobs or businesses due to greater competition from abroad. Here in the US, these disruptions have led to a loss of work and empowerment in some communities, a surge in deaths of despair in some places, and increases in political polarization. Additionally, the pandemic revealed the vulnerability of supply chains in the US and many other countries, including for essential medical products. So as we enjoy the fruits of globalization, we also take on its risks. And many of our recent and current challenges are inherently global. Climate change is affecting nearly all 8 billion inhabitants of our planet and suggests a need for more international collaboration. The COVID pandemic has shown to all of us that viruses do not respect national borders. As global citizens, we'll often end up better off if we can work together to tackle these sorts of challenges. Additionally, globalization extends beyond economics and finance. It's also about geopolitics. The US relationship with China and Russia holds profound implications for the economy, as well as for the regional security and stability in neighboring Asian countries and in many other countries around the world. Most recently, conflicts in the Middle East and in Ukraine have exacted a very heavy toll in terms of lives lost and have significantly increased global uncertainty on many fronts, including the markets for food, for energy, and loanable funds. These geopolitical tensions remind us that peace should never be taken for granted. So amid the changing world order, how should the US position itself and what role will the US play? Earlier this month, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, released its World Economic Outlook which praised the remarkable strength of the US economy. The country continues to be the top choice of destination for entrepreneurial, hardworking immigrants from all over the world. Despite a small decline, the US dollar maintains its dominance as the world reserve currency. Our national leaders have promised to repair US relations with close allies and offered a vision of US reengagement globally. And there is indeed good reason for optimism. Globalization can foster greater education, innovation, and ultimately boost living standards. A worldwide sharing of ideas, cultures, and technologies can bring about better solutions to many of our most pressing problems. And a more interconnected world can bring greater prosperity. That's the promise of globalization. 
Of course, the ideals behind it can't just fall into place without smart decision making by our policymakers. So that's, much, that's what much of our focus will be on today, on the policies that can best shape globalization's success while cushioning its most negative effects. And we have with us today a really just incredible lineup of speakers from the worlds of academia, business, and government who will walk us through a wide range of topics covering industrial policy, international finance, the role of organizations such as the IMF and World Bank, relations with China and Russia, and the security and regulatory issues around artificial intelligence. As our name suggests, analyzing and striving to improve economic policy is what we're all about here at CEPR. For those of you who are new to our orbit, we've been supporting economic policy research here at Stanford for more than 40 years. We make a tremendous investment not only in the research of our own faculty, but in the next generation of economic policymakers and scholars. CEPR boasts a lineup of more than 120 incredibly accomplished faculty. To take just one example from those 122 individuals, one of our senior fellows, Maya Rossen Slater, was today awarded the Elaine Bennett Prize by the American Economics Association as the best female economist across all fields within 10 years of receiving her PhD. Last year, our senior fellow, Rebecca Diamond, won the same award, and previous CEPR affiliated recipients include Monica Piazzesi and Susan Athey. And they're just, that's just one. There's lots of awards and prizes across our 120 people based on their great research, advising, teaching, and so forth, and policy engagement. Many of our programs at CEPR are aimed at teaching, training, and mentoring undergraduate students, pre-doctoral fellows, and graduate students. We also support visiting postdoctoral fellows and early career faculty from other institutions who are clearly the rising stars in the profession. A central part of our mission is to share the research that happens here with policymakers, with journalists, with business leaders, and with peer academics. And we host major, major events such as this to convene various audiences for discussions about economic policy. Next week, for instance, we'll be hosting Lena Khan, the chair of the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, who will be at CEPR talking about the impact of antitrust policy on innovation. We'll have many more events in the months following that, including on March 1st, 2024, a Friday, when we'll hold our annual CEPR Economic Summit that will address a host of issues, including the federal budget, the future of cities, and the healthcare sector, while also hearing from the CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang, the newest member of the Federal Reserve Board, Adriana Kugler, and the CEO of Ford, Jim Farley. All of this work and all of these events happen in very large part because of our supporters. It takes a lot of generous philanthropy to maintain the excellent work that we do, and I am incredibly grateful to our donors, many of whom are here today. And before we kick things off with our first panel, I want to give a very special thank you to two uh, individuals here at CEPR, uh, Jalu Streeter and Aline Kadawal. Jalu is CEPR's executive director, and she, and she played... <laughs> Jalu is CEPR's executive director, and she played a huge role in organizing every part of today's agenda, which involved a lot of research to figure out what issues should we zoom in on in our panels? Whom should we invite to speak? That's a lot of work. And she insulated me from all of it. But I learned a lot about globalization along the way. So all of these words, if I were up here two months ago, I wouldn't be, have no idea what I'm saying. But thanks to Jalu, I do. And Aline is our senior event planner who interacted with so many of the speakers and attendees and so forth and has made sure this event has come together so well. So please join me again in thanking those two in particular. And Jalu and Aline are just two people on the CEPR staff, uh, CEPR team, who, uh, all of whom make me look good. So if you think like, or the, make CEPR look good. So if you think this event is going well, or there are eloquent words up here, I don't get any credit for that, they should. So, uh, and a very big thanks in advance to every one of our panelists and moderators today. I know a number of people traveled here from far away, made time out from their days, and we know that many people here are super busy, and so we're very, very grateful. And I just want to single out especially our keynote speaker, Maury Obsfeld, with whom I'll be speaking in a couple hours.